Accepting payments online can seem like a daunting task. With considerations such as security, conversion rates, and tax, there is a lot to consider. In this video, we'll explore how we can simplify the process of taking subscription payments online and how we can exclusively provide paying customers access to premium content. We'll be using three key technologies to build out a full stack website where customers can pay a monthly subscription fee to access our site's premium features. These three technologies are Next.js, Firebase, and Stripe. Before we jump right into the details, remember you can always access the source code for this project in the description below. If you find that you've already implemented specific parts of the project, I've also included timestamps for you to skip forward to as well. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this, and if you find yourself enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like button as well. Without further ado, let's get right into it. If you're not already familiar with these tools, Next.js is a framework built on top of React that has a focus on having the best developer experience possible. Firebase is a set of tools supported by Google that provide amazing features out of the box, including authentication as well as a cloud database that we're going to go through in this video. Stripe is a solution which brings all the elements of taking payments online together and allows you to stay focused on building out the features of your website or app rather than spending time on the infrastructure behind taking payments. To initialize a new Next.js project, we'll run the following commands from a terminal. The first one we'll run is npx create next app and then the name of your application to initialize a new Next.js project. We'll change directories into that newly created app and then write code dot to open it up in Visual Studio Code. I'll be using TypeScript within this video to additionally show you how you can integrate Stripe with the built-in TypeScript support. However, you don't have to if you choose not to. To set up TypeScript with Next.js, we'll create a tsconfig.json file at the root of our project's directory. Then we'll run npm install dash dash save dev at type slash react and then run npm run dev. Our tsconfig.json file will now automatically be populated with the best settings to work with Next.js and TypeScript, and we can go ahead and change all of our .js files inside our pages directory to be .tsx files. I'll also go ahead and delete our API folder as we won't be using API routes within this project. Now that we're all set up with Next.js, we'll go ahead and go to the Firebase console and sign in with our Google account. To create a new project within Firebase, We'll click add project and enter the name and configure the simple project settings to your liking. It'll only take around one or two minutes to set this up. Once you've done that, we'll set up Firebase authentication by clicking authentication here in the left hand side menu. For this project, we'll be using GitHub to sign up users. To enable GitHub authentication, we'll scroll down to GitHub and toggle it to enabled. You'll notice that we need to provide a client ID as well as a client secret here in order for us to enable GitHub authentication. To retrieve these values, we'll need to create a GitHub application. To do that, we'll first copy this authorization callback URL and then navigate to github.com and in the top right corner, we'll click settings, developer settings, and then head to OAuth apps and register a new OAuth application. Pick a name for your newly created app and we'll set localhost 3000 as the homepage URL and then we'll use the URL that we just copied from Firebase as the authorization callback URL. Once you've done that, go ahead and generate a client secret and copy the client ID as well as the client secret from the GitHub application to the Firebase authentication window that we had open previously. Hit save and then we're all set up for users to sign up to our website with GitHub. Back within Firebase, we'll need to create a web application for us to communicate to our Firebase project's resources. To do that, click the gear icon from the menu and then click project settings. We'll need to add a web app to this project since we'll be using Next.js. Give your app a name and leave the configuration window open as we'll set these variables up in our Next.js project now. To do that, Go back to Visual Studio Code window and create a file at the root of your project called .env.local. Copy and paste your configuration variables from Firebase into this file so that it ends up looking like this. By doing it this way, we won't have to expose our private configuration values in our source code. Now that we've set up authentication, we've also got our configuration variables in our code base. Let's go ahead and create a Firestore database. Click Firestore database from the Firebase console menu, choose a region, and then start the database in test mode. To connect our code on the front end, we'll need to install a few more packages in our project. 
we'll run npm install Firebase and React Firebase hooks. Now we're ready to initialize Firebase inside our client side code. So we'll create a Firebase folder at the root of our project and create a Firebase client.tsx within that newly created folder. We'll import Firebase as well as the auth and Firestore modules, copy all of our environment variables into a client credentials variable, and then call Firebase.initialize app with those client credentials. And that's all we need to do to interact with the resources that we created in the cloud inside our client application. Now let's write some code to sign up a user with GitHub on our client side. I'll create a folder called components at the root of the project project and within that folder create a file called login.tsx. This is just going to be a simple button component which has an on-click handler that calls a function called sign in with github. This is a custom function that we're going to write which calls auth.signin with popup and we'll pass a new firebase.auth.github auth provider into that popup. And let's go ahead and replace the contents of our index.tsx page to show the login component. To preview our changes, just run npm run dev on the terminal again to start the development server and then go to localhost 3000. If we click on that beautiful looking button, we're showing a pop-up to sign in with GitHub into our application. Go ahead and test it out and sign in for yourself. Hopefully it will work and if you take a look at the authentication tab inside your Firebase console now, you'll notice that you've successfully signed up as a user to your Firebase project. Sadly, we'll need to delete this user inside Firebase for now because we want to store user information inside our database too so that when they sign up, a document gets created for them inside our users collection. So rather than just returning that initial sign in with pop-up, we'll await that value and store it in a user credentials variable. Then within the users collection, we'll create a new document that has the name of the UID of the user that just signed up. To do that, we'll say firebase.firestore and the users collection and create a new doc with user credentials.user.uid and set that value to be the UID, email, name, provider, and photo URL of that user credentials.user. Now if we go back to our site and try and sign in again, all of our information is saved straight into a Firestore document inside a newly created users collection every time a user signs up. This will actually come in handy when we're using Stripe later in the video as we'll need a collection of customers. Before we get started integrating Stripe into our application, you'll need to make sure you have a Stripe account set up if you don't have one already. Then we'll navigate to run subscription payments with Stripe from the Firebase extensions page. Firebase extensions are pre-packaged solutions that help you implement specific features within Firebase much more quickly and easily. This specific extension syncs customer subscription statuses with your cloud Firestore and adds metadata to users inside Firebase authentication so that you can easily tell who is a paying customer and who is still on the free tier, all while within Firebase. This way, we'll be able to show premium content exclusively to paying customers. One quick thing to note before we install this extension is that to use cloud functions within Firebase, which are part of this extension, you'll need to upgrade to the pay-as-you-go plan of Firebase called Blaze. While it's unlikely that you'll incur any cost more than a few cents or maybe a few dollars, unless you already have a significant user base, you should always remember to set up a budget alert to make sure you don't blow the bank. To install this extension, click on the Install in Console button. Now select your Firebase project. Here's what this extension will actually build out for us once we've installed it. It's going to create six Firebase functions for us behind the scenes. The first one is called Create Customer, which creates a Stripe customer object when a new user signs up. The second one is called Create Checkout Session which creates a checkout session to collect the customer's payment details. Third one is called Create Portal Link, which creates links to the customer portal for the user to manage their payment and subscription details. Fourth one is called Handle Webhook Events, which handles Stripe webhook events to keep subscription statuses in sync and update custom claims within Firebase authentication. The fifth one is called On User Deleted, which deletes the Stripe customer object and cancels all of their subscriptions when the user is deleted from Firebase authentication. And the final one is very similar to the fifth one where the user data deleted from Cloud Firestore will trigger the deletion of that customer within Stripe as well. Once you've upgraded to the Blaze pay-as-you-go plan and set up a very quick budget alert, we'll go ahead and configure the extension with the following settings. We'll use products for the products and pricing plans collection and users for the customer details and subscriptions collection. I'm going to set do not sync and do not delete for the next two values. We'll go back to the Stripe dashboard and ensure that you're viewing test data while you're doing the following steps. Navigate to the developer's API keys section and generate a new restricted key with the following permissions. We'll have write access to customers, checkout sessions and customer portal, 
and read access to subscriptions and plans. Give your new key a name and copy the key into the Stripe API key with restricted access field back at the Firebase extension configuration form. Once you've done all that, go ahead and hit install extension. It'll take a few minutes to install it, but once it's done, click on how this extension works as we'll still need to configure a few more things to get it to work nicely with Firebase. The first step that it recommends is setting the Firestore security rules. So we'll copy these recommended rules and go to the rules tab of our Firestore database and paste them in here. These rules will restrict access to only allow users to be able to see their own user document. By matching up the UID of the authenticated user inside the request, with the UID of the document itself. Something you also want to add is write permission if the request.auth.uid is equal to UID, otherwise our function that writes to the Firestore database as a user signs up will break. You'll need to set up a webhook that synchronizes the relevant details from Stripe to your cloud Firestore. This will include product and pricing data from the Stripe dashboard, as well as the customer subscription details. To do that, we'll go back to our Stripe dashboard and click developers and webhooks. We'll copy the URL from the Firebase extension, how this extension works tab, and paste it as a new endpoint inside Stripe webhooks. We'll need to select the following events to send to that endpoint. Product created, product updated and product deleted, price created, price updated and price deleted, checkout session completed, customer subscription created, customer subscription updated, customer subscription deleted, tax rate dot created, tax rate updated, invoice paid, invoice payment succeeded, invoice payment failed, invoice upcoming, invoice marked uncollectible, and invoice payment action required. There should be a total of 18 events that you're sending to the webhook endpoint. And if you would prefer to read all of those events, I'll have a link to the written version of this video in the description as well. Once you've created the webhook, copy the webhook signing secret found here, and then we'll need to reconfigure our Firebase extension to replace the existing placeholder value that was found within the Stripe webhook secret value. We'll replace it to be the webhook signing secret that we just copied from the Stripe dashboard. In order for customers to buy something from us, we actually need to create something that we're selling inside Stripe. This is where we'll use Stripe products. The Firebase extension that we've installed currently supports pricing plans that bill a predefined amount at a specific interval. This is perfect for a monthly subscription payment. So let's go ahead and set that up inside Stripe. Let's create a product inside Stripe so that our users can upgrade their accounts to become premium users. To do that, we'll go back to the Stripe dashboard, click on products and add product. Enter the name of your product, which is something like premium plan and add an additional description of the product. Beneath that, open up the additional options section and add a metadata field called Firebase role with the value of premium. This value will be attached to the user inside Firebase as a custom claim on that user. This allows us to quickly see if a user is a premium customer or a free customer within the Firebase user itself. Next step is to set a monthly price for being a premium member, which I'm going to set as $5 USD a month. It's been a long journey of setup and configuration so far, but hopefully you're still chugging along as we've got some more coding coming now. The first thing we'll need to do is install the stripe slash stripe.js package by running npm install at stripe slash stripe.js on the command line. Then we'll create another new folder at the root of our project called stripe. And within that folder, create a new file called initialize stripe.ts, which will be the function that loads stripe. The reason that we need to do it this way is to be PCI compliant. And to do that, you must load stripe.js directly from js.stripe.com. So what that means is you're not allowed to include it in a bundle or host it yourself. And this package wraps the global Stripe function provided by the stripe.js script as an ES module. This simple script that we're gonna create will use the load Stripe method from the Stripe package that we just installed. And we'll need to pass in a publishable key here from the test data from your Stripe dashboard, which you can get here. The way that Stripe works with this extension is in three simple steps. The first step is that a new document gets created inside the checkout session subcollection of the user's specific document inside our Firestore. The second step is the extension automatically updates that document with a valid checkout session ID. And the third step that we're responsible for is to navigate the user to that checkout session by using the ID from Firestore. Let's create another function to handle the logic in those three steps. Create a new file within the Stripe folder 
called createCheckoutSession.ts. We'll first need to install Firebase as well as the initialize Stripe function that we defined previously. We'll create a function called createCheckoutSession which accepts a UID of the user as a parameter. Then we'll create a new subcollection within this user's document called Checkout Sessions and copy the price ID of the premium plan product that we created within Stripe and add it as a field within this newly created document alongside a success URL and a cancel URL. In the background, the extension that we installed will attach a session ID to that document as it gets created. So we'll listen for changes on that document and check if we have a valid session ID. If we do have a valid session ID, we'll use our initialize Stripe function from earlier and then call stripe.redirect to checkout, passing in the session ID as a parameter. We'll create a third file within our Stripe folder called is user premium. Within this function, we'll await the current users.getID token value. We'll decode this token by getting the ID token result, and then we'll return the true or false value of if the user has a custom claim of Stripe role. If you recall, when we were creating the product in our Stripe dashboard, we created a metadata field called Firebase role, which gets set as the custom claim called Stripe role on the Firebase user. For convenience, we'll create a new file within the Stripe folder to create a custom React hook called use premium status. Within this hook, we'll import Firebase as well as the is user premium function that we defined previously, and we'll create a function that accepts a user of type firebase.user as its only parameter. Then we'll have a stateful value called premium status of type boolean, which is set to false by default. Within this function, we'll have a use effect that gets triggered every time the user variable changes, and we'll say if there's a user, check the premium status of that user by awaiting the value of the is user premium function. Then we'll just return the boolean value Value of premium status. Back at the home page, we'll import Firebase, the use auth state hook from the React Firebase hooks package, and the create checkout sessions package from our Stripe folder, as well as the use premium status hook that we created. We'll use the use auth state hook to grab the user and the user loading values from Firebase auth, and we'll say const user is premium and pass the Firebase user into our use premium status hook. While the user is loading, we'll show a simple loading screen. When the user is done loading and there is not a user detected, we'll use the login component that we created earlier. And then when there is a user detected, we'll simply show the user's display name and we'll use the user is premium value to display the upgrade to premium button if they are not a premium user. Otherwise, we'll give them a cookie for being a premium customer. To test this out, I'll delete my user document from Firestore database as well as my user from Firebase authentication. I'll go back to localhost 3000 and sign in with my GitHub profile and as you can see my display name gets shown on the home page here and when we check our firebase authentication a user gets created for us in there and we've also got the user document created for us in the cloud firestore if we click the upgrade to premium button a checkout session gets created for us in the checkout underscore session sub collection inside our user document and then we'll be redirected by our function to the stripe checkout page and you can create a valid test transaction here using one of stripe's test credit cards so i'll use the number 4242 over and over again and then just fill it with dummy data to try and make a test transaction. Once that's done processing, we'll be redirected back to our homepage. And as you can see, we're now detected as a premium customer and we've got the cookie as a reward. And you should be able to validate this inside your Stripe dashboard as well, as you should have a successfully signed up customer as well as some monthly recurring revenue coming in from that subscription. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button as it really does help up my channel. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel as well. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.